this morning, I will consider the subject under new management. That is the title for my sermon. Under new management. I will read from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. Let me see those who have their Bibles. I believe everyone got their back. Thank you very much. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in who? Christ. What kind of creature is he? He's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Let us pray. Dear loving Father and our God in heaven, we call upon your name this morning, Lord, that you may talk to us in all the clarity that, God, when all is said and done, we will be drawn closer to you. We came to worship you, Lord. Come down and be in our midst, for we have prayed in the name of Jesus Christ. Some years ago, I followed a TV series. I guess most of you followed it. Known as Extreme Home Makeover. Did you watch it? I did watch it and it was so nice to see how a house is brought down, changed completely by Ty Pennington and his crew. They would take over a house that looks not so good and walk on it and by the time they were done, you would have something that would wow you. And, and when the owners come back to the house, they were utterly amazed by what they would see. And I know also in our home, sometimes we do some renovations as well. We look at our kitchen, it doesn't look like what we want it to look like. Or maybe the ceiling, or maybe uh, the floor, or maybe the bathroom, and, and much more. And so we think, no, something has to happen. But even we go beyond that. Sometimes we look at ourselves in the mirror and we say, mm -mm, I don't like the way I look like. And so we change our wardrobes. We can, uh, 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 I don't like my body size. And so I start exercising and working out so that I can shed off some weight. Some people will go to an extent of changing their hair style and hair color. And some people will even go an extra mile and do facial surgeries. Some people will do hip uh, enlargements and breast enlargements or, or enhancement and, and even change the color of their skin, the pigmentation. Why do we do all this? We do all this so that we can look good and feel better about ourselves. But I have a problem with it. No, I don't have a problem with the fact that we look at what is wrong on our side and on our exterior and we start to fix it. No, I got no problem with that. The only problem I have is that we stop there and we don't zoom in to our interior and try to see what really ought to be changed. So we focus on the hardware and we don't really get inside to see what is it that I have to change inside my life. Fixing the interior has become so elusive. We do so well. Even spend a lot of money to change the cover. But we really don't spend time to look at what we need to do inside us. Fixing the interior has been ignored. Fixing the interior seems to be a little bit difficult for most of the people. And so we will look good from far, but we are far from good. We would look interesting and appealing and attractive, but deep inside us, we are so dirty and so nasty. The Bible says in Jeremiah 17 verse 9, if you have your Bible, you can open Jeremiah 17 verse 9. The Bible says the hearts 
is what? Deceptive above all things and desperately wicked. Who, the Bible says, who can cure the heart? So our problem is not the exterior. Our problem is the interior, the heart, the seat of judgment. That is our biggest problem. And I want us to look at it this morning, how we can deal with it. A few years ago, I read a story about a couple who adopted two wolves. They discovered the wolves while they were still young and small while making a movie in Alaska about the animals called the caribou. They took them to their home, raised them, and gave them the kindest treatment that they could give. And for, for a while, these wolves behaved nicely and, you know, friendly, just like dogs. But finally, after some time, the wolf nature came out of them and they turned against their masters who barely escaped with their lives. And the wolves ran away to the wild to join the wild pack of wolves. No matter the kind of treatment that they received, the wolf nature remained unchanged. Our sinful nature is the same. It stays the same. No amount of education will change your sinful nature. No amount of refinement, no amount of self-help courses, no amount of New Year's resolution, no amount of motivational talk, no amount of anything else can change and deal with our selfishness and the sinful nature that we have that is prone to sin, inclined to sin, and you know, it has tendencies that are always pulling and attracting us against the will of God. All of us, the Bible says, have a fallen nature. And that fallen nature is not in the past. It is in the present. Where is it? It is in the present. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3 verse 23, for all how many people? Did it say some? Mm -mm. Did it say most of the people? No, the Bible says for all have sinned. Now listen to this very clearly. It doesn't say and fallen short. It says and fall short. That is in the present. That is to say, as you sit here this morning, you, are you, you, you have sinned and you, have, you, you, you are in, in the fall already. And those who are watching through television, all of us are sinners. And there is nothing that we can do on the exterior that can deal with this situation. No, it is beyond our cure. Because of our fallen nature, we are easily attracted by that which is fatal and dangerous. Because of our fallen nature, we are tantalized by evil. Because of our fallen nature, we are mesmerized and attracted by that which will destroy and kill us eventually. Because of our fallen nature, we are rebelled by righteousness. You know, that is our nature. That is how we came. We came with a fallen nature and our environment has not made anything better because we are nurtured in sin. In fact, David says, I was conceived in sin and I was shaped in iniquity. That is, he was born a sinner and he came out and, and the environment did not make him any better. That is our problem, ladies and gentlemen, that we are contending with. The troubles that we have in the world today are largely because of the nature that we come with and we never get time to deal with it or we never allow God to deal with it. So we have a big problem, ladies and gentlemen. A big problem that is occasioned by our fallen nature. But I don't want to leave you on that note. That would really be so sad. Because there is good news, my friend. Amen? There is good news. Thank God because there is a solution for our problem. But, but now that, that solution is not from within us. Let me read what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 13 and verse 23. Which book did I say? Jeremiah. Chapter number? And verse number? 23. The Bible says, Can an Ethiopian change his skin color? Can a leopard 
take away its sports. Neither can you, you, you who is sitting here and you who is watching over the television, neither can you start doing good because you are accustomed. You are used to doing evil. So the Bible says it is really impossible for a person who has a faulty nature and who has a tainted nature to start being holy and start doing good. That is what the Bible says. Now that is, that is to say, if we have to be what God wants us to be, then that has to come out of us because we don't have the capacity to be what God wants us to be. In fact, Isaiah says, all our righteousness is like what? Filthy rags. Even if I've tried all my best, when God looks at me, it is just like filthy rags. So that means there, there must be a righteousness that comes from out of me that makes me you know, be appealing, that, that makes me be what God wants me to be. Let me use this illustration to bring out what God does in us when we accept him. A businessman wanted to sell a warehouse and its property. The building had been empty for several months and fogs had destroyed the windows. The doors had been damaged. And there was trash and litter everywhere. It didn't look so good, but this man was selling it. And so when he was taking, uh, you know, this, this prospective buyer round trying to show him the building that he is selling, and, and, you know, he was at pain trying to explain, please, when you accept to buy this building, I'm, I'm going to fix the windows, don't worry. I'm, I'm going to fix the door, don't worry. I'm, I'm going to clean, I, I will get builders who will correct all the damages. And so the guy was busy trying to explain. The prospective buyer told him, please stop it, stop it. Forget about the repairs. I don't want this building. When I buy this place, I only want the site. And when I get this place, I'm going to put up something completely new and different. Now, that is the kind of change that God is talking about. God says, when you accept me, forget about the patching. Forget about the mending. Forget about the fixing what you have. When you genuinely accept me and you belong to me, that, that is, you are under new management. When you belong to me fully and completely and genuinely, I want the sight. I want your life. And I will fix it. Amen? Amen. He says, I will fix it. My, my, no, I, I am a good fixer. I will fix you. And when I am done fixing you, no one will notice your old life. When I am done working on you, he says, mm -mm, I don't want to start repairing. Mm -mm. No, no, that is not my thing. Just what you have to do is give me your life. And I start working on you. I start changing your desires. I start changing your perspectives. I start changing your appetites and your tests. I start walking on you and walking in you, transforming and converting you. It's a process, but when I am done, the things you used to do, you won't do them anymore. The places you used to go, you won't go there anymore. Because I, I shall have walked in the inside. Now, I don't just want to work on the cover. I want to work on the software. And when I'm done working with the software, he says, you will be different. That is what God wants to do for you and me, my friend. And for all of us who are watching through television, that is what God wants to do for us. Listen to what the Bible says again. Let's go back to our scripture. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is what kind of creature? A new creature. And he says the old is passed away and behold everything has become new. That is what God wants to do for you, my friend, this morning. I believe in God and I know he does what he says he will do. Now my part is to be in Christ Jesus. If any man 
be in Christ Jesus. I want to be a new creature. Now listen to what the Bible says again in Ezekiel 36. And verse number 26. What book did I say again? Chapter number? Very good. And verse number 26, the Bible says, I will give you what kind of heart? Now when we began, we said our problem is a heart problem. And we need a heart surgery. Our heart is failing. We've gone to the doctor and the doctor lowers his glasses and he says, I have bad news for you. After the diagnosis and tests and everything else, I think your heart is failing you. But God says, don't worry because your problem is a heart problem. I got a solution. And so he says, I will give you what kind of heart? A new heart. I will give you. And not just a new heart, a new spirit. Some version will say, a new mind will I put Within you. That is what God wants to do with you, my friend. He wants to remove the old, cold heart of stone. Remove it and give you a new heart. Well, you start looking at things differently. You start having a relationship with God. And warm relationship with God. A saving relationship with God. That is what God wants to do with you. Very quickly, I want to share with you the seven gifts that God gives you. When you commit your life to Christ. Number one. A new relationship. What is number one again? A new relationship. Once we were separated by sin. Isaiah 59 verse 2 says. Our sin comes in between us and God. And brings about a separation. And not just a separation. But an alienation. I have nothing to do with God. But when I accept Jesus Christ, the Bible says he becomes my heavenly father and I am reborn into his family. A new relationship altogether. Amen? Amen. Number two, a new citizenship. What did I say? Most of us, we belong to a country called Kenya. But when you accept Jesus Christ, you become a citizen of another kingdom again called the kingdom of God. Amen? And, and that means you possess Dual citizenship. You have a home here, but you have a permanent home up above. That is why we are saying, behold, he is coming. And Jesus Christ will come for those who are ready. Those who are saying, Lord Jesus, as you prepare the place for me, prepare me for that place. God, I want to be ready when you come again. As you make the mansion for me, God, I am a citizen of heaven. But even before then, God help me to be what you want to be right down here. Ephesians 2.19. So then you are no more strangers but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Number three. A new family. A new family. You become related to other believers and you call them Brothers and, and sisters. Brothers and sisters. The Bible says in John 1, 12, all those who believed in him and accepted in him, he gave them the power to become the children of God. Amen? And, and that is what we are. And so we start relating to one another. Brothers and sisters. Number four. A new purpose. A new purpose. Now we start living for God. When I give my life to Jesus, I start living for God. I have a new purpose. Christ is at the center of my life. The, 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 the full crown. He, he, he's holding everything. And, and my life gravitates towards him. Listen to what Paul says in Galatians 2 verse 20. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But whom? Christ lives in me. And he says, a life I live, I live by his power. So my life, you know, the center of my life becomes uh, Jesus Christ. Number five, a new power. What did I say? A new power. Jesus promised his disciples that you shall receive power. You see, we were not meant to live the Christian life by our own strength. Mm -mm. If we tried that, we would really fail. And so when we accept Jesus Christ, he gives us the power to be what he wants us to be. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. You shall be a testimony. And the Bible says, not by might, not by, but by what? 
the spirit of the Lord that we continue existing as Christians. Number six, a new journey. We start taking a new direction altogether when we accept Jesus Christ. We walk the path of righteousness when we accept Jesus Christ. Psalms chapter 1 verse 1. Very interesting scripture. I want you to go and read that. And number 7, the last one. Now before I get to number 7, I want to check on you if you still are following me. Number 1, a new what? Very good. Number 2? Now very good. Number 3? Very good. Number 4? Very good. Number five. And number six. And number seven, a new destiny. What did I say, church? A new destiny. Everything changes. Everything changes once we were headed to hell. But when we accept Jesus Christ, our direction changes. We are heaven bound. Once we were headed to eternal separation from God, but now we are going to live with God forever. Once we had no hope. But when we accept Jesus Christ, we do have hope now. What a blessed thing to give our life to Jesus Christ. Romans 6.23, the Bible says, the wages of sin is, but I don't like that part. I like the part that follows, part B. But the gift of God is eternal life. So that, that means our destiny is changed from death to eternal life. And all of time, favorite verse that I love so much, John 3 verse 16. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him, now believes in him, shall not do what? Perish. But now things change. But have eternal life. Amen. So destiny is changed from perish to eternal life. God wants to manage your life today. Are you willing to say, Lord, I give you my life. Lord, I give you my heart. I want you to build something completely different out of my life. Are you willing to surrender to Jesus and tell him, Jesus, take over my life. Take over my mouth. Take over my feet. Take over my everything. Jesus, come in. And live my life. Come in and, and, and accomplish your purposes in my life. Let me see your hand if you have that desire. And even those who are at home, those who are watching, I want to pray with you also that God may take over your life. Let's pray. Dear loving Father and our God in heaven, we thank you so much, God, that you have a plan to change and to transform us. Thank you, God, for talking to us and challenging us this morning. God, help us to surrender to you and genuinely and fully. Change us, Lord. We want to stay with you forever. Change us, Lord, and save us that we may belong to you. And God, help us to live this Christian life through the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. This is our prayer, trusting and believing in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ. And may everybody say amen.